Hello friends. Welcome to C Sharp Intermediate to Advanced tutorial. Now you are watching final part of the subseries timer and timer callback. In this video, we will implement the timer call callback and examine the output and see how thread pool is executing the timer callback function. First, we learned about the timer class and we learned about callback function, due time and period. Next, we talked about the thread pool and how it allocates the thread to execute the timer callback function and how timer callback function is seen as a task. Then we talked about the example in the previous video. Now we will go ahead with the implementation. So to use a timer, we need to include system dot threading. So here we are not using the timer component. We are using the timer class from system dot threading. That's why we included this namespace and in this example, we are going to print some message in the debug output window. So we put a namespace for system dot diagnostics as well. Next in the form level, if you see, we are declaring a system threading already included the namespace so it's not required but for readability purpose we kept a system dot threading dot timer then timer also if you directly put timer the uh, it's a windows form based application right the application may get confused which timer to use well, because one is from uh, uh, component and another one is from uh, threading class so that's why here we specify the fully qualified name system threading timer timer and we initially keeping it as a null and it's a private member then we define the callback and if you see in our previous example we defined the callback for uh, uh, task scheduling so the signature is uh, still same we call this as a tick callback just a method name that got changed from our previous subseries in previous subseries we kept something like a gen random or a random gen some name we gave this time we we are giving the name as a tick callback and if you see, it takes object as parameter, returns nothing. We will come back to this timer callback. During the form load, if you see, we are creating timer is already there. System dot threading dot timer. First, we are creating the callback timer callback, and we pass our tick callback routine. So this is the tick callback. And we are passing that uh, here to while constructing the timer callback. So we construct the callback method using the delegate timer callback and we pass that as a first parameter to our uh, timer construction. Next, we don't want to pass any parameter. So that's why for uh, this one, we are passing a null. And if you want to send some data to the tick callback, then you can create the object here and you can pass that. And remember, as already told, when you pick the timeout, you have to make sure that uh, um, the procedure will not overlap. So if it overlap, this will be the shared object you are sending and this is not thread safe. You have to do synchronization inside the uh, tick callback. 
all right so first parameter second parameter third one due time we are stating due time as infinite and fourth one also infinite that means uh, period also we are giving it as infinite so even though the timer is created here it will not start so during the form load we created the timer object by passing the timer callback routine next txt period leave uh, that means when you leave the text box for period um, so when we are leaving the period text box we are parsing the text and we are storing the period millisecond and here we are using the immediate if statement so whatever we passed here if that is less than 500 millisecond we are making it as a thousand second that means in the period frequency between timer callback so in the period if you specify 10 millisecond the system will not allow so because it may uh, hang your uh, OS so that's why we put some uh, safety check here so when you are testing by max you can give uh, uh, 500 millisecond so if you give something less than that then we will make it as a uh, one second all right and uh, so without typing anything if you directly go to the second text box second text box uh, execution time then you will be getting a error here we are not doing any validation so when you are uh, when we are testing always give you a number here then move to the next uh, text box all right next uh, during the start button click here if you see txt period also we are taking all right txt period here we are making it as a thousand millisecond when we are leaving but when we are clicking the start button we are taking this period and storing that as a period millisecond then to the timer dot change method this is the change method right change method takes two parameter one is due time and another one is periodic time so if you see due time we are giving it as zero that means we are asking to call the timer callback immediately after executing this since we specify zero millisecond do not wait any second directly go ahead and call the uh, timer callback that means once it sees uh, the due time as zero it executes the uh, timer callback then period millisecond whatever you specify here suppose if you specified a thousand millisecond in the text box then the timer routine will get called periodically for every one millisecond sorry every one second or every thousand millisecond right so that's what we are doing in this start then during the stop click if you see timer dot change here also we are using change method only we specify due time as zero that means we are telling call the timer callback immediately after you uh, come out of this function then we also specify also call the timer callback to the period which we specify here so if a user feeds 500 millisecond that means in a second call this timer callback two times so that's the frequency we are setting and here in the stop if you see we are setting due time as infinite period also infinite that means we are absolutely stopping the timer since both are infinite here due time is infinite period also infinite which means we are stopping the timer now let's go inside the timer callback here 
the second one is the delay right we are taking the delay parsing it storing that as delay millisecond then we are applying the thread dot slip so this is how we just mimic the timer routine takes this much time usually it will be your task you may be performing bulk task and you should know how much time that a task will take by means of some benchmarking all right so here we are mimicking the uh, time taken to execute this callback procedure uh, by making use of the sleep method then date time dot now dot to string hour hour minute minute second second ff milli millisecond or microsecond we will see that when we go to the when we execute the code so here we are absolutely getting the time object or the time in terms of a string format date time now current time dot to string date time dot now dot to string which gives the time in terms of a string format so we stored that then we are getting the thread name because the tick callback may be executed by a uh, um, thread in the thread pool right so that's why we are getting the thread name here if you see thread dot current thread dot managed thread id so this will give the currently executing threads id so if there are different thread from a thread pool coming into picture then you will be seeing different thread id here and finally in the debug dot right line in the console output window we are writing the thread name this uh, symbol then we are specifying the time it means you will be seeing the output like thread 2 that's the thread given by the thread pool colon and uh, whatever time we constructed i don't know this one we will see when we go to the demo so now it's a demo time we will implement the code change so this is where we left uh, previously so we will go to the code and we will include the required namespace system dot threading as well as the system dot diagnostics next uh, inside the form we will declare a member for system dot threading dot timer then here we will define the timer callback we will implement this later so in the form load that means here i am double clicking it we will initiate the timer here timer is null right we are initializing it timer timer callback this is the delegate and target target is uh, tick callback we are giving it to the uh, timer callback delegate that's the para first parameter passed to the timer second parameter is the object we are passing it as null then so next we need to handle a text box dot leave that means here in the events tab enter is there press the leave double clicking it and just checking user can give something greater than 500 millisecond so if i give just 200 and go here this will be converted to 1000 and if by mistake if you directly go to the second there will be an exception and we are not handling that let's concentrate on uh, the thread callback 
then in the start button click we will use the change method to change the here if you see due time and the period this one is the period and we will ask the timer to call the callback routine immediately and then we will specify the period millisecond which is parsed from this uh, txt txt period text box so here we will handle the stop method and we will use the timer dot change we will specify infinite time for uh, the change method due time infinite period also infinite then we will go to our timer callback so as already explained in the powerpoint slide we implemented the timer callback we named this as a tick callback delay we are uh, mimicking it based on uh, user input so if you give thousand then uh, the routine will wait for one second then here we are just taking the date time and we are printing the thread name as well as i mean the thread id as well as the time now we will execute this so debug dot write line that means we will get the output here in the output window let me run it we will clear the output window so for the first time what i am giving the timer frequency as call the timer routine we have very two second execution time i'm just giving it uh, decent execution time that means one or two thread is enough and definitely not more than two thread by this time let me click start and if you see thread six thread six sometime it may change also we'll wait so that's all so thread pool is using the thread six and executing the timer callback routine timer callback routine is printing the time and you can see the second part is increasing here right now we will stop the timer and check it is working and if you see the timer is stopped it stopped at 21 10 49 we will clear the output window and this time we will change timer frequency as 300 millisecond will not be possible it will be reset to 1000 we will keep 500 millisecond that means timer will get invoked two times in a second so execution time if you see i am giving it as 200 millisecond that means two second each timer routine will take two second that means before the first timer completes there will be three or four tasks in the queue so that means for the thread pool it is not possible to use one thread you will be seeing two or three thread ids in the output window now let's start this you see now timer callback is executed but you can see how there are four thread involved here let me click stop it may take some time that's how it stopped let's uh, examine the output and if you see since the timer callback is executed in a thread pool here you are seeing there are four thread is allocated from the thread pool to execute the timer callback routine and you can see it keep on repeating why because when thread 6 is executing the timer callback 
one more is added to the queue so 11 and one more task is added 12 one more task is added 13 before the fifth task adds thread 1 already completed or thread 6 completed its work so that is free return to the thread pool so even though a new task is added uh, there is a availability of thread that's why thread pool is not using any new thread it reuses the existing thread so thread 6 is engaged here new task is added 11 is finished by this time so 11 is used so likewise if you see only four thread is engaged so the timer routine whenever you are writing you have to make sure the routine should not have any dead loop or deadlock so in that case there is a possibility of eating up the thread resources in the thread pool so um, when you are writing the timer callback uh, check the piece of code that comes inside this uh, timer callback so check it multiple time make sure there will not be any infinite loop or possibility of infinite loop all those stuff otherwise uh, our thread pool doesn't know that uh, there is a problem so it will keep on allocating the thread and once thread pool threads are exhausted it may affect uh, uh, other um, routines which is making use of the thread pool as well so uh, be careful when you are uh, writing the uh, timer callback that's all here uh, in this uh, video Thank you for watching. Bye.